Hello YouTube, Scott Levin here on another great edition of Get to Know. Thank you for joining us. We have a really special guest today. I've been looking forward to meeting Joanne Folletta, the conductor of the Buffalo Phil Harmonic Orchestra and so many other things. Joanne, thanks for joining us today. It is great to get to know you today. Thank you. I'm so happy that we're having this conversation. We're Thank so you. glad to have you here. I know Buffalo is so glad to have you here also for the last 20 years. Tell me first and foremost, where are you from? I know you're from the New York area, New York yes, City area, right? I grew up in New York City. I grew up in Queens, in Queens, New York City. And the I, great Queens. Queens. The borough. <laughs> it's a great borough. Um, and uh, got all my education in, in New York City. And I'm so happy to be in Buffalo. You know, I, I was music director in other places, but when I came back to, to New York State, mm -hmm. I, it just felt right. And it's been a great 20 years. So you grew up in Queens. You went to high school there also, right? Yes, and then I went to Manhattan to uh, Juilliard. Juilliard, tell me about that. What was that like? I mean, that is quite an accomplishment in and of itself to get to go to Juilliard. Well, it's pretty intense. Yes. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a conservatory. And they expect you know you to be working day and night, and we were. And it was, right. it was. I'm so glad. And, and it, during the time there, it was, it was very tough. I mean, you were very competitive, as you can imagine. You're constant. You're never, you're never at the level you want to be. So you keep working. Uh, but now I'm so glad that I did that. Now, and when you were at Juilliard, a lot of people think of it as just a dance school. What were you studying particularly? There I was at actually studying conducting, and conducting. It, it is a dance school. Actually, right. Juilliard is it, the, one of the fun things about it is it's, it's a sort of a three part school the largest part is the music from all the instruments to conducting to composing but we have a wonderful dance department there and a wonderful acting department so you'd see sometimes some stars come in and out that you recognize who were teaching there so but uh, it was a great place to go to school when did you find out in your youth that you were musically inclined or that you liked music i know you played a few instruments also yes when i was on my seventh birthday my father bought me a little classical guitar that was his favorite instrument and he made arrangements for the very next day for a teacher to give me, start giving me lessons. So that was the beginning. <laughs> and I was so happy. I loved the guitar. I loved music. So I think that was the start of my journey. And looking back, I think after that, I never thought of myself as other than a musician. That was right. who I was. And right. um, so it all was thanks to my dad and uh, his love of guitar. So here we are. We're at Juilliard. And you graduate Juilliard. Then what happens to Joanne? Well, my first job was actually in Denver, Colorado, while I was in Juilliard. I was still studying in Juilliard, and I won a job in Denver. And I was making that trip back and forth every couple of weeks to Denver and back to New York. And, uh, and I discovered, actually, I discovered what New Yorkers finally come to discover, that there's other places other <laughs> that than are just not New York. New York City, <laughs> right. right. And it was beautiful. It was beautiful to live in Denver. And I spent time in Milwaukee. I spent time in San Francisco, in Virginia in Long Beach, California, working with orchestras. Uh, and Buffalo feels like um, the right place. It's, it's the cozy shoe, isn't it? It's oh, just that it comfortable. Is, it is, but in one way, artistically, it's very vibrant and has very high expectations because when I came to be music director, I was following in the footsteps of people like Lucas Voss, yes. Michael Tilson Thomas, Joseph Cripps, William Steinberg. These are great, great luminaries in the conducting world. So. It was a little daunting. So when did you find out that you were playing the guitar as a seven-year-old? When did you find out that, hey, I really like conducting the orchestra? What, well, what, what was that moment? a few moment? years later, you know, my parents started to take my sister and, and me to concerts. And we went to Carnegie Hall, and, and we went to a lot of concerts. And there was something about the orchestra that I found fascinating. I mean, just the people working together, they were all different. They were intense they were making something beautiful happen they were all cooperating and i said to my parents that's what i want to do i want to be in the middle of that you they told them that told you said that. i'm going to do i was that. 11 i think they said 11 I, I have to do that and they didn't really know how one becomes a conductor so i tried to find out i bought bought scores and studied them i talked to people i practiced piano i practiced cello uh, to learn what it was like to play in an orchestra and finally i was able to begin to study when i was 18. But um, it was my dream. So in a way, being here and conducting this wonderful orchestra is like living a dream I had when I was 11 years old. Did you have a mentor that helped you through all those different steps? Well, I had great teachers. I have to say that in the conservatories, I had great teachers. I had teachers, again, that very high standards and excellent teachers. Um, and we had the great privilege of having a special guest come and teach us sometimes at Juilliard, 
Leonard Bernstein. I himself. have that in my notes. Tell yes. us about Leonard Bernstein. I mean, well, that's incredible. Oh yeah, he lived. Really. He lived in New York, and right. um, so he'd come in, and oh, it was always terrifying. You can't imagine how frightened we were. There was four or five of us in our class, and and everyone would come into the room to watch him teach us because he was such a luminary. Right. Um, so the dancers were in there, and the and the faculty and the actors, everyone was crammed in there, and. He was unbelievable. He was like larger than life. When he came into the room, mm -hmm. it was as if, as if the electricity was turned <laughs> right. on. And, There's the maestro. He'd come in smoking his little cigarette, and um, he was very kind to us. I mean, he probably knew we were terrified. <laughs> um, sure. And uh, he knew what it was like to you know, conduct and, and, and learn. Um, but uh, he taught us something so important that it was really all about the emotion in the music. It wasn't mm. about worrying o over how to beat this or who mm. was playing too loudly or whatever. It was about what did the music mean as uh, a human being, right. to human beings. And um, Are you I never connecting to that. the people's hearts? Exactly. Are you moving them? Exactly. Right. And he was the epitome of that. When yeah. he conducted, you could see he was so in touch with the, the emotion, the drama in the music. So learning that from him was one of the greatest lessons of my life. So when you're on stage, I know that when the camera's on, I'm in a different zone. You must be in a specific zone. Are you concentrating on all the different parts of the stage? Are you looking at the uh, people in the audience to see if they're enjoying? What, what are you thinking about when well, you're on stage conducting? When I walk out, I get a brief glimpse of the audience, just right. a brief glimpse. We, we bow, and then right. all of my attention is focused on the musicians. Uh, they're actually playing to the audience, but I'm looking at them. So my attention is focused on the 90, 100 people on the stage and what they're doing and how I can sort of create a landscape where they can make great music because they are the artists who are actually creating the sound. So my job is to really enable them to be the great artists that they are. Uh, and so I'm in constant touch with them. The amazing thing is it's all nonverbal because we can't speak to each other, but right. we're constantly communicating through gestures, through uh, looking at each oh. other, and I'm listening to them, they're listening to each other. It's very intense. So that's my focus when I'm on the stage. What's the most difficult part of your job? You know, the difficult part is trying to help everyone on the stage know how valuable they are. Mm -hmm. Because this is an interesting thing you might not have uh, thought about. All of the musicians on the stage win their jobs in intense competition, intense auditions. Sure. And generally, they never thought they would be in an orchestra. Many of them wanted to be soloists. The great violinists of like Yo-Yo Ma, cellist, or Joshua Bell, because they're all that good. I mean, they're all so excellent. They didn't necessarily see themselves as part of a team, exactly. is what you're saying. Exactly. Right. They, they, they were thinking very soloistically, and they were always the star of their teacher's class. Right, I'm sure. The concertmaster in their school orchestra. So. Um, then they, then they win an orchestra job, and, and that's their life. To help them understand how critical their excellence is to us, that is something that I think about every day. And uh, it's, it, it's not an easy thing to do, but um, they certainly live that in the Buffalo Philharmonic. And when you see them playing, they're so intensely focused on their art form. Tell so. me about the day you got the phone call from somebody here in Buffalo and said, Joanne Folletta. We'd like to interview you for a job here in Buffalo. Well, it, it happened somewhat like that. I, they had invited me to come and conduct a concert. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember thinking uh, how wonderful it was to work with the musicians. And so the first call was, would you like to come back and conduct another concert, which would be sort of more just getting to know you. And, uh, and after that, they made the decision. And I think I was overwhelmed a bit. Again, because of the kind of history that they've had here, they have right. had probably one of the greatest history of, of, of conducting uh, leaders in our country. I mean, ex astonishing conductors. So, and you've uh, brought such a light to that also, because not everybody knows that, but you have brought so much positive attention to the BPO. Well, they deserved it. Yes. I mean, it was almost like this was a little bit of a secret up here. No yeah. one knew what was going on, but we started to record those. Uh, we've made now 50 recordings, I think, together in these years, and they've gone all over the world. Uh, people hear the Buffalo Philharmonic on radio all the time. Uh, we go on tour. We've been going to Florida. We went to Poland. So it's, it's, it's a great group, and they have a lot to be proud of, and I think people are paying attention to them. Where do you reside the majority of the year? Where do you live? I live in Buffalo. In you live city. in Buffalo. I live in Buffalo. You're a city it. girl. Yeah. 
So you live here. Do you have a family here? Do well, my have... husband lives with me. Uh, okay. The rest of my family, uh, extended family, is all back in the New York, New Jersey area. Okay. So I get to go back and, and see them. But um, Buffalo has turned out to be an amazing place to live, as I think you, you feel too. Yeah, you've been here the exact same amount of time. Yeah. We both came in 1998. Right. You came here. I came to Channel 2. What, what is it about Buffalo um, that you love? What, what is it that... that keeps you here in Buffalo because you could have you've had opportunities yeah. to go to other places what is it about Buffalo that keeps you here well I think it's the connectedness somehow of this city um, it's large enough to have everything mm -hmm. and it's small enough to care about people yeah. and I think that's so beautiful people have been great in welcoming me and welcoming us and uh, it's it's been beautiful to live here but also what matters to me too is that they have high expectations of mm -hmm. us. They want their orchestra to be great. And they never let go of their orchestra, you know, in good times and bad times. We've been here now 85 years, 84 years. Um, and they support it they too. They support it. Yeah. And another thing I'm very proud of with this orchestra, it didn't start as a kind of um, expensive, board founded orchestra. It was a works project orchestra. Oh, it was founded by the that. government simply to keep people alive, to make jobs available so it was really always, I did not know that yeah it's always been an orchestra of the city of the people an orchestra that belongs to the citizens of Buffalo and we're proud of that you know we really we really care that we're here all of our musicians have moved here made their homes here they love it and we play for this region a couple more questions what you know a lot of times the, the youth today they think of the orchestra how do we get young children to continue in the footsteps of their grandparents and maybe their parents because there's so many other competing venues out there for their attention. Right. How do we get the youth to get excited about the orchestra? Well, we're working on that very hard. We've now expanded our youth program so that every child in every grade, every year of their education comes to Kleinhans. That's over 55,000 people. So smart. They come in, they have a concert experience, we prepare them for it, their teachers bring them in, they have a great time. They're and then they come the it. next year. So in a way, coming to Klein Hands for them, coming to hear a classical concert, is what they, they know. So we're going to continue to do that. I wish that somehow we could put a clarinet or a violin or a flute in everyone's hand in the fourth grade or the mm -hmm. fifth grade with lessons saying, you don't have to become a professional musician, but you will love playing music, making music. Because so many schools have taken I out know, a I lot know. of that stuff. But actually, hands-on experience really makes you into a different person. So, Last question. What does Joanne Folletta like to do in her free time? Do you have hobbies? What do you like well, to do? I know you're a very busy woman. Your day is highly scheduled. I know yes. that. But well, what do you do sometimes. when you like to relax? Well, I love, I love to bike ride, and it's mm -hmm. wonderful to bike ride in the city. Mm -hmm. it's, it's fantastic to bike ride here. I love to read. Uh, I write poetry. Um, you do? Yeah. Wow. I've just, I've just um, you know, and I travel a lot. Uh, when I'm not in Buffalo, I'm music, usually guest conducting, and I almost always try to get to know a little bit about the city that I'm visiting, so that's kind of a hobby of mine, too. Are you a Bills fan, shall I say? Oh, of course. <laughs> you are? Okay, of there course. you go. There's news, folks. Joanne Paletta <laughs> is a Bills fan. <laughs> We are so glad to have you here. Thank Buffalo you. is lucky to have you in town, and uh, you're, a, you're a charming woman, and we are so glad that you're here. We hope you're here for many well, more years to come. I'm the lucky one. I'm the lucky one. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thanks for joining us, and thank you for joining us on Get to Know. And don't forget to click that subscribe button and the notification bell as well, and you'll get to know when we have our next episode. See you then.